Good morning. I want to welcome you to worship. We have an obnoxious amount of announcements this morning. So I'm just going to invite you to take a breath and kind of hang in there with me. This is a very busy season in the church, in the life of the church. Um, we do need a few volunteers for our German Christmas service. Is it December 8th? Yes, it's going to be on December 8th, which is a Sunday, one of the first Sundays in December. And we host this event every single year. It's a service that is completely in German. And we get people from all over the Midwest. And we host it the same weekend as the German Christmas market. It's around 5 p.m. And we could use, I think, some ushers. And then downstairs, we always serve traditional German treats. We could also use some folks helping down there. So if you're interested in helping on the committee or participating in the service, please email Ben, our director of music and worship. And then just a big note of gratitude for all of you for the work that you did last week, making sure that we packed blessing bags and served in our clothes closet. We made over 215 blessing bags for the community, and we unloaded all kinds of donations in the clothes closet. So thank you very much. A big round of applause. Our next big work day in the clothes closet is Saturday, November 2nd from 9 to noon. So please keep that on your calendars. And then a note that we have a bunch of upcoming events on uh, and insert in your bulletin because there's too much happening, right? So it has some stuff about worship, things happening after worship that you can note on here for Sundays throughout October and November. Um, as you know, today we are kicking off our month of stewardship. So some of you may have already received in your mailboxes this week a envelope filled with stewardship materials from the church. It would include a letter from the council, a letter from myself, a brochure and uh, an ACH form for giving financially to the church. Throughout this month, I invite you and your families to really discern the different ways that you can support the mission and ministry here at Capitol Hill Lutheran Church. As you know, we have a lot of active missions and it is not possible without your creativity, your energy, your volunteer hours and your resources. And so as we look forward to 2025, we're gonna invite you to discern what it is that you can share with the church in the year to come in order to help our neighborhood flourish. A reminder that after worship today is the fall pumpkin patch outing. So if you are in confirmation or high school, you are invited to head to a pumpkin patch with Andrea and I. I'm feeling very competitive today, so I will be rock climbing and shooting pumpkins in order to beat all of the kids this morning. And Today, during our children's message, we are going to collect those little piggies that we sent home with you last week for ELCA World Hunger in honor of the 50th anniversary. So if you brought them, the kids will come around and collect them. If you didn't bring them and you want to give, the kids will still be bringing some stuff around so you can put some money into the little piggies as they're bringing them around during the children's offering today. Our council met this week, and Jean Gerritsen has a whole bunch more announcements for you. Come on up, Jean. Let's hear it for Jean and her announcements. Not so much. All right. So, our property committee never runs out of projects. And if you, <laughs> and if you are feeling any job insecurity, have I got a job for you. Um, this last week, uh, four of our members uh, uh, installed a handrail uh, right outside the clothes closet. Um, so this will be good because it'll benefit not only um, our volunteers that work at the closed closet, but also the people that come to use things from the closed closet. So thank you, property guys. The sound system. Everybody wants to know about the sound system. Um, we have a company called Waldingers, and they are working on the sound system doing the wiring. So if you see a couple of guys, um, Zach and I think it's Jimmy or Johnny, I can never keep it straight, um, wandering around here with a lot of wires, that's what they're doing. So we're finally getting going on that. Um, and we're hoping that they'll be done maybe in a week with that part. Then um, RDI, the people that are actually putting the equipment in for the sound system, will be here. So let's all give up a little prayer that by Christmas, we're gonna have this thing completed. Um, as we kick off Stewardship Month at uh, Capitol Hill Lutheran Church, uh, you, Pastor Min already told you about the stewardship resources in the mail. 
uh, take a little time to, to fill those out. And over the next four weeks, uh, we're going to be doing uh, hearing from the treasurer and our financial administrator, um, as well as some stewardship stories from members of our congregation. Um, because the work that we do here touches not only the individuals we're trying to help, but also the volunteers that are offering the help. So um, if you feel it in your heart, or if I you know, shame you enough, maybe you can <laughs> volunteer. Inspire, I'm not shaming you anymore. Inspire, I'm very inspired. Sometimes I don't choose the right words, but. Um, and then, does anybody here like pie? I think more people like pie than this. Does everybody like pie? Okay, well you've got an opportunity here. Um, in, on November the 24th, we're gonna have our annual pie auction. And last year we doubled the amount that we, that we had, had taken in the year before. And so last year we got, was it $30,000 from the pie auction? Uh, no, no it wasn't. Well, I wanted to double that, is what I'm saying. <laughs> I think it was about $8,000, truthfully. So um, the goal is this year to increase that. And if we double that, that would be really great, too. Um, so that's November the 24th. It's right before Thanksgiving, so you can buy your pies. When you're buying your pie, keep in mind you're not really buying a pie. You're actually uh, giving some donation to the church. So we'll have really expensive pies. Pastor Minna's making some pies. Um, they're always very beautiful. But all of you can do it too. You can make plain pies like I do. Um, right after Stewardship Month, we're gonna have a, um, a gift that we give away every year to a mission here locally. And it's $10,000. And so you'll have an opportunity to vote on um, who you would like to see receive this gift that we give every year. Um, so send your ideas. Uh, it's got to be a local Iowa nonprofit. And um, send it to uh, Pastor Minna or to the office <clears throat> and the council. If we get more than three, the council will narrow down who will be receiving this gift. Um, and then during Advent, following worship, will vote as a congregation uh, to determine which organization will get that gift before Christmas. So check out the bi uh, biannual e email blasts, um, your bulletins. There's a lot going on. And if you need more information, don't ask me, but <laughs> you know who to go to. So ask Pastor Mina or, or ask uh, Cece, who takes care of the office. Thanks. Friends, I invite you to rise and to turn to your bulletins. We'll continue this morning with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The cravings at war within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins. Draw near to us with grace in time of need, and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Friends, God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is number 639, When We Are Living.
friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together our prayer of the day. Sovereign God, you turn your greatness into goodness for all the peoples on earth. Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom and make us desire always and only your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. It is time for the children's message. If there are any kids that like to come up this morning. Everybody. How are you today? Hey, good. I'm so glad you're good. Hi, Lavinia. You guys tired today? Huh? You are? Oh, why are you tired? Wait, 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 wait. Let me... But nobody else is tired. You all have a lot of energy, right? So much energy. So much energy that you could run around the sanctuary and collect these little pigs full of money and shake them really loud? Good, because that's what you're going to be doing pretty soon. 
Oh, yeah. Not, not real pigs, though, okay? <laughs> They're just little paper pigs. <laughs> we are kicking off what we call Stewardship Month here. Yeah, what does Stewardship Month mean? Does anybody know what Stewardship means? No. None of you? No. All right, let's say you know. What do you think it means? Oh, storage does, but I'm saying stewardship. Let's say it, stewardship. Yeah, we are called to be good stewards. You're called to be a good steward. That means that we steward, which means we tend to or we care for the things that we do and say and give in this world. So an example of good stewardship would be cleaning your bedroom when your mother has asked you five times this week. Uh, that, that would be good stewardship of your toys and your blankets and your pillows and all the other random things that you find in your bedrooms, right? Good stewardship. Good stewardship would also mean cleaning your office more often than every six months right? I know. So that's one way we can be good stewards of like the spaces we spend time in. But you can also be good stewards of yourselves. Do you shower sometimes? You don't? You do? Oh, good. Yeah. Because what happens if you don't shower? You smell stinky. What else happens? Bath. You're dirty, meaning germs. And germs could make you sick, right? And other people sick. So we... Exactly, Elliot. We have to be careful about germs, so we have to take care of our bodies. But that also means we have to be good stewards of what we put inside our bodies, right? So Halloween's coming up. You're not going to eat more than one piece of candy every day, right? No. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. Okay. That was very entertaining. Thank you. Very good choir. So, but even though we're going to probably eat a bunch of delicious candy on Halloween and the days that follow, we probably will still probably eat some fruits and vegetables because our parents or grandparents or adults will make us, right? Fruits and veggies. Oh, it's hard, right? So that's a good example, Alice. Did you guys know... Hold on, hold on, let me finish. Did you guys know that sometimes it is really hard to be a good steward? Did you know that? Sometimes we don't want to clean our bedrooms or our office, do we? No. Sometimes we don't want to eat our fruits or veggies, do we? No. Sometimes we're too lazy to want to shower, right? Oh, it happens. But today, as a church, we are committing together to be good stewards. And so throughout this month, hold on, guys. Throughout this month, your adults in your life are going to receive these brochures. And on the brochures are places where they can mark for you and for them where they can be good stewards in the church, which means they're going to use their time or their talents or their gifts or share their money with this place so that we can help other people and help take care of what God has given us. And the best thing that God has given us is the love of Jesus Christ. And you and I get to share the love of Jesus Christ. Did you know that? And so as we kick off Stewardship Month, we're reminded as Christians that God calls us to think about others. And so today, as our first act of stewardship, you're going to go around, you're going to collect those paper piggies, those noisy offerings, and you're going to bring them up to me up here. You can shake them all the way you're up. Other people might want to put some money or coins in those piggies, so kind of be paying attention if they have their hands up. And our first act of stewardship is to give generously to ELCA World Hunger, which is an organization that helps keep people fed and keep them out of poverty around the world. So I'm going to set you free into God's beautiful barnyard behind me. And for about 60 seconds, you can go around and find a piggy or share a piggy and then collect them and bring them back up. So go find some piggies.
bring him up. All right, you guys can bring your piggies all the way up here. Bring them all, wow, all the way up here. And we're gonna set them up on this altar, and that's awesome, wow, amazing. Go ahead and put them all, good job, you guys. Wow, look at all these piggies. All right, I'm gonna have you stay right up here, okay? Oh, oh, great job, Lavinia, awesome, wow. Oh, let's hold the bottom. Here we go, we'll put her all the way up here. All right, wow. All right, are the, have all the piggies landed? Yeah. Perfect. So, do you see all these beautiful piggies? Yeah. Can everybody look? Can't see? Come over here. I'm gonna go behind you guys. You guys look at the pigs quick. All of those pigs represent the whole lot of love that everybody in here has for the rest of the world. And these piggies and what's inside of them are gonna be huge gifts to other people and are gonna help them flourish. And so let us clap and wrap and say a prayer. Clap and wrap. Good and wonderful God, thank you for reminding us to give abundantly and generously and to be good stewards of our time, our talents, and our resources. God, we pray that these gifts that we have raised for ELCA World Hunger impact communities around the world that are desperate for our good stewardship. God, help us to be faithful and create tangible ways to love our neighbors as we reflect on this year and look forward to 2025. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys can head back to your spots. What's that? What are you guys doing? I think they snuck something up. morning. This reading is from the last of four passages in Isaiah that are often called servant songs. Christians are probably more familiar with this particular servant song. In light of Christian faith, the servant's healing ministry and redemptive offering are understood to be fulfilled in the life and death of Christ. A reading from Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried out our diseases. Yet we counted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich. Although he had done no violence, there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet he was the will of God to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, you shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make me righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he poured out himself to death, and he was numbered 
with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many, and he made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read Psalm 91 responsibly. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation, for God will give the angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. You will tread upon the lion, cub, and viper. You will trample down the lion and the serpent. They will call me, and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. Using imagery from scripture and from Jewish worship practices, Jesus is presented as a great high priest who was obedient to God's saving plan. Through his suffering and death, he has become the source of eternal salvation. A reading from Hebrews, the fifth chapter. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also, Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. And as he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God, a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Mark, the 10th chapter. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And Jesus said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant. But it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, 
Those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you, but whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Gospel of our Lord. I invite you to be seated. Friends, grace and peace to you all from Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. So there's this TV show called Survivor. Does anybody watch Survivor? Some of you do. Have most of you heard of Survivor? Yeah. Survivor is a show that places contestants in a remote location together somewhere. They don't know where they're going. And the goal of it is for one of them to outlast everybody else. And they have to do physical challenges, they have to form strategic alliances, they have to engage in social gameplay in order to win the whole show in that big cash prize. And so while the competition is really about individual survival, the game highlights how crucial it is to form alliances and how crucial it is to be recognized as valuable to the whole group. That means success. The dynamic in this show, I think, reflects the human need that we all have for significance and the role that it does play in our actual survival. Where being part of a trusted group often determines one's ability to thrive or be voted out. I would compare the show Survivor to my experience of middle school or high school, where you are constantly navigating social alliances, trying not to get voted out of the group, where your significance is strongly based off of how you relate to those around you. The thing is, we all want to feel important, don't we? We all want our lives to matter. We all want to have a sense of purpose or to be recognized. Whether or not it's in school or our careers, our families, our community, we we long for significance. There are many reasons for this. We do have an innate need as human beings for connection, which is part of our evolutionary development being recognized and valued by others in a social group has been crucial for survival. Much of our history depended on being part of a group for protection, for resources. But this need for recognition and significance also tugs at our heartstrings, the heartstrings of our identity and our self-esteem because we have a real dopamine response when we receive positive reinforcement from others. And that kind of creates this feedback loop where we seek recognition because it leads us to a sense of pleasure. Likewise, pretty much all of us live within social structures where status and power dynamics are influential, where the roles that we hold that are valued within the community in which we live means greater access to resources or influence or power, increasing our opportunity. All of this is to say, this longing for significance and recognition and importance is nothing new. And today, that longing is at the heart of the request that we hear in our gospel lesson. James and John, they approach Jesus, 
Seems like a bold request. Let us sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. They want to be recognized, to be seen. They want to be valued by the one who means the most to them. But also they want positions of power and honor because they are well aware of what comes with being at Jesus' right and left. You know, I think it is a very human request that they have this morning. How many of us, in some way or another, have sought that kind of recognition from somebody in our lives? Whether at school, our jobs, our relationships, maybe even the church. It's natural to want to be recognized, to be great in everything that comes with it. But Jesus, Jesus has a very different vision of what it means to be great. You see, Jesus' vision of greatness does not come with recognition or significance or influence. In fact, Jesus' response to James and John is shocking. Jesus says, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be servant of all. Because in the kingdom of God, greatness as you and I know it is flipped upside down. Greatness, Jesus says, has nothing to do with influence or recognition or power or status or control has nothing to do with your ability to vote people off the island. Greatness is found in humility. Greatness is found in putting others first. Greatness is found in serving those who are the most vulnerable. Jesus redefines greatness in a way that goes against everything that we have been taught and everything that we celebrate in our culture. We live in a society that rewards achievement, especially individual achievement. Society that celebrates wealth and idolizes power. But Jesus calls us to a different kind of life this morning, a life where greatness is not measured by what we achieve, but by how we serve our neighbor. And this call for servanthood isn't for us as individuals. It's for the whole community. As you'll note in this passage, Jesus' vision of greatness is communal. Jesus is calling us not just to be servants in our personal lives, but to create communities where servanthood is the norm where the well-being of others is prioritized over any self-serving ambition. Jesus calls us to create communities where everyone, no matter their background, their resources, or their status, has dignity and value and a place at the table. This is the kind of greatness that Jesus is talking about the disciples this morning, a greatness that is found by building community where the love of Christ that's been poured out for all people is at the center of their life together. I like to think about this idea like my family gathering around a table for a meal when I was growing up. We did not have a square or a rectangle table. We had a round table. So there was no head of household at the table, no head of the table. There was no hierarchy around the table. You kind of got the seat you got to first. In Jesus' vision of the kingdom, there are no assigned seats. Everyone from the youngest, the oldest, from the least to the greatest, the documented and undocumented, those who've been imprisoned and those who only know freedom. From the wealthiest to the poorest, whether financially or mentally or spiritually or physically, everyone is invited to the same table with equal honor. And Jesus even presses further this morning by his response to James and John. 
Jesus lifts up that those who've been accustomed to power and authority are now called to be the ones that are serving the meal around the table. Because to faithfully occupy a place at Jesus' table means actively contributing to the well-being of those around you, no matter who they are. So as we reflect on this gospel passage today, I invite you to consider how we, as a church, can continue to live out this call to radical hospitality. How can we continue to be a place where success is defined only by love and where greatness is only measured by our service to others? You know, the work we do in the ministries that we have here is already a testament to this gospel. I see how many hours you put in each week. I see the resources you share every single week. I see those chances that you take to serve the community around us, especially those who are at risk or vulnerable or have a need that is not being met. I watch you day after day clear a space for them at the table. I watch you pull a chair up to that table for them that perhaps they've never been invited to. That's what the church can be. So I pray as we enter together today into this season of stewardship, and as we do face a difficult end to our budget year with that steep increase in insurance cost, which means we have to ponder what ministry and mission might look like in 2025, I pray that we stay focused on what Christ defines as success and on what Christ deems to be great in this world. And may we continue to embody Christ's vision for humanity in our life together here, no matter what the world throws our way. Trusting that our God who sent Christ to live and die and be raised for us will continue to be ever-present, loving us recklessly along the way. Thanks be to God. Our hymn of the day this morning is number 659, Will You Let Me Be Your Servant? And I invite the congregation to rise as you're able.
invite you to turn to page nine in your bulletins and together with the whole church across the world, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Challenged by God's word in Christ, let us pray for the church, for the world, and for the whole creation. Holy One, we give thanks for all servant leaders of the church. Bless bishops and pastors and deacons. Bless church staff and volunteers with humble wisdom and ground them in your love. God of grace. Creative One, we give thanks for the delicate balance of our natural world. Kindle in us a spirit of caring strength in the preservation of habitats food availability, and centers of refuge, that all may thrive out of grace. Empowering One, fill the leaders of governments with a spirit of service that prioritizes those on the margins, whether due to job loss, underemployment, unsafe working conditions, or immigration status. May economic equity be achieved for all people God of grace, restoring one. Send your angels to watch over, rescue, and protect those who are injured or ill. Nurse those who suffer hardship, disease, injury, or difficulty with comfort and peace. Today we especially lift in prayer Ed, James, Latchor, Vivian, Ingrid, Maggie, Russell, Malcolm, Vicky. Oscar, Lewis, Craig, Tessa, Jerry, Linda, Marilyn, Tim, Robert, Cheryl, Bert, Randy, Dixie, Liam, Cielo, and Trudy. God of grace. Abiding one, you call pastors to shepherd the congregation toward faithful living as servants and followers of Jesus. Inspire all ordained ministers and seminarians to ministry that challenges, engages, and comforts those in their care. God of grace. Saving one, we give thanks for the disciples James and John and all saints who have faithfully served you. We rejoice in a promised place at the feast of victory that we receive by your grace alone. God of grace. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the saving grace that you freely give, both now and forever. Amen. Friends, may the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another. God's peace to those who are worshiping with us online. We're so glad you're here this morning.
Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. And in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then again, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered together around this table by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Christ has taught us. Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It is Jesus who welcomes you all to this table. Come, friends, here is your God. I invite you to be seated. We do communion continuously this Sunday. In our trays, the outer circles, the red liquid is wine. The center circles, the clear liquid is grape juice. There is a gluten-free wafer available. This is God's table, and all are welcome. Come to the table believing.
to me the body and the blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal. You have fed us dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to rise for the blessing. Just a note for confirmation in high school students, those sixth grade and above, head down to the fellowship hall after this, and youth will head to the choir room for singing. Friends, God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you, keep you, and give you peace. Amen. Our sending hymn this morning is number 431. O oh Christ, what can it mean for us? Go in peace and follow Jesus. Thanks be to God.